Hey, welcome back. Emily Taylor, our guest right now from U.S. Law Shield, uslawshield.com, uh, where they, you can uh, go on there and sign up and get advice in the event that you ever uh, need to use your uh, carry concealed weapon for any reason. Emily, good morning to you. Is Emily there? Hello? Yeah, hell, good morning. Oh, sorry, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing great. Great to have you on the show again. I appreciate that. Oh, absolutely. Happy yeah, to be here. Absolutely. So yesterday, uh, or a day or two ago anyway, I know the um, a, a judge in San Diego g gave a, a pretty big boost to the Second Amendment uh, for people that live in California who, who he felt that their rights as gun owners had been infringed. Uh, this is being hailed as a major ruling by a lot of gun rights groups. And uh, I can, after reading through it, I can see why. Absolutely. And although California has more just stupid gun laws than I could even rattle off to you in, in <laughs> one is one of the worst offenders. It's their quote, quote, high capacity magazine ban, which says that, uh, you know, not only can you not buy a magazine that holds more than 10 rounds, you can't even own one if you had one before the ban went into effect. And both of those laws have been struck down by this judge's opinion. Yeah, it's true. L I'm going to read part of the ruling to people so they understand why the, the common sense that he used here is upsetting the left. But listen to this. He said, bad political ideals cannot be stopped by criminalizing bad political speech. Crime waves cannot be broken with warrantless searches or unreasonable searches. Neither can the government response to a few mad men with guns and ammunition be a law that turns millions of responsible, law-abiding people trying to protect themselves into criminals. Absolutely. And he's really utilized another common sense argument that has really upset the left already. And you can hear them attacking it um, if you listen to any commentary on this ruling, where he's said, look, you say this ban was put into place to stop uh, mass shootings. Everyone, of course, wants to stop mass shootings. But what this judge says is mass shootings are the extreme minority of what's happening in this country and in this state. What we're really concerned about is letting good people protect themselves from robbery, from burglary, from a home invasion, from violent assault, and that there's just quite simply more of a need, because those are the things that are happening every day, whereas mass shootings are relatively rare, and that's what the left has clung on to, and they're saying, this judge doesn't care about mass shootings, and you know he wants to let these things happen because he says they're not important, which is, of course, not what he's saying at yeah. all. Yeah. Um, Emily, this was my favorite part of his ruling right here. He, he said, and I quote, the Second Amendment does not exist to protect the right to bear down pillows and foam baseball bats. It protects guns, and every gun is dangerous. It, it, you can't delineate that because one magazine holds more rounds than another that it is inherently more dangerous than the first. He's making a point here that I think is going to end up going all the way to the United States Supreme Court, and it's such common sense that I thank goodness again that we've got a 5-4 majority on that court right now. That's actually what's most exciting, I think, about this ruling is that, yes, certainly, we know, of course, there will be appealed up to the Ninth Circuit. We know that the Ninth Circuit will overturn the lower court opinion because they're the Ninth Circuit. And then it will certainly be appealed to the Supreme Court where, cross your fingers, they look more inclined now than ever to take up gun rights causes, to start striking down these overly restrictive laws from California, New York, New Jersey, et cetera. And should they decide to take up this case, you're absolutely right. We have the perfect court to rule in our favor as Second Amendment advocates. It's a very exciting state of affairs. Yeah, it is. And I'm, I'm thrilled that uh, that we got this ruling and I'm looking forward to to hearing more about it. It's going to get appealed to the Ninth Circuit where you know it's likely to get overturned, but then it, it'll be appealed higher than that, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, maybe maybe they'll surprise us. You, I, 
I'm not holding my breath. Uh, the other big story this week, and, and again, we're talking to Emily Taylor from U.S. Law Shield, w- was out of Colorado where they've signed yet another one of these red flag gun bills. I don't know a lot of details on the one in Colorado yet, but my hesitation always is who's who's ultimately deciding whether or not your Second Amendment rights get suspended or not? That's the really upsetting part about these red flag laws is that almost universally, and of course they vary state by state, but almost universally what we're doing is not bringing in a mental health professional to evaluate someone. We are taking the word of Um, whoever's qualified under the law to bring this challenge, which is um, mostly family members, people who live with you. But bear in mind, that could generally include things like ex-spouses, in-laws, maybe people that you don't have a great relationship with can show up to a judge, say vaguely, well, he's a danger to himself and others. You know, I heard him say once that he would, you know, he'd, he'd go nuts if, you know, I don't know, the, you know, uh, what have you, whatever weird thing we say when we're not really thinking about it. Right. And a judge can then ex parte take all of your firearms away. And then you have a chance to show up and say, I'm not crazy, but there is no mental health professional <clears throat> built into these bills to actually make that determination. And it's, it, I think, a gross violation of what we call substantive due process because they are all far too vague to be taking away. A constitutional right. That's a good point. Then you're in the, you're suddenly in the position of proving your innocence. Absolutely. <laughs> and keep in mind that you didn't know this, ban- this uh, order was being entered. So all of a sudden, you have no idea why the police are surrounding you. They're at your door. They're barging into your house. They're searching. They're detaining you. You are going to be probably furious and upset and trying to figure things out and then they're going to take all of that video footage of you maybe really angry and upset and they're going to use that against you when you actually get to show up and say i'm not dangerous and they're going to say well look at this yeah look at how you acted when we were at your house well of course anyone would act that way but the cards are stacked against you in these proceedings from from the beginning yeah that's a great point uh emily before i let you go again remind people what they what benefit uh, they get from u.s law shield Sure. U.S. Law Shield is a legal defense for self-defense program. So for the monthly fee of $10.95, you are uh, given a free lawyer should you ever have to use your firearm or any other legal weapon in self-defense. If you're charged criminally or you're sued civilly, you have free attorneys who specialize in the Second Amendment and in gun law. You also have access um, to attorneys who who um, can help you with any legal question you might have um, during business hours. So it's, it's a really great program. Yeah, absolutely. Emily, we appreciate your time today, and we'll have you on again soon. Thank you very much. You bet. Uh, Emily Taylor, USLawShield.com is the uh, website there. And-